In this video I'm going to show you how uh, I make a fool uh, to attach onto the whip we'd be making. So we're going to be making basically this part here, this is the fool that goes on the end of the whip. Um, now I like to make these out of four pieces uh, and the reason I do that is because I usually finish in a, in a six point and if I just had like a, a, a doubled over piece, like a piece with only two pieces inside, um, there'd be quite a sharp drop off in mass and uh, stiffness here. Um, so that's why I originally made these ones, but it's going to serve us quite well with this whip as well. Uh, if you imagine we've got, in the end of our whip, we have uh, five pieces, so we've got the four in the overlay and one in the core. Um, and then the one in the core will drop out at that point, uh, where the hitch knot is tied. Um, and then we'll have four pieces in our fall carrying on. Uh, and that will serve us quite well, because it then means that uh, we're still dropping strands at every single segment along the whip. Um, so, with that in mind, how do we make a fall with four pieces in it? Uh, well, we only actually need three pieces because we're going to fold some inside and one's going to go along the outside. So I've made up here a little uh, table. Sorry for the maths phobic, but uh, this is how I work stuff out. Um, so, what's going to happen? We're going to have one piece here. Um, and we want a segment, uh, I'm making a, a whip, uh, I'm making a fall which is 30 inches long. I mean, it'll probably end up being about 32, 33, just a little bit longer, so that there's uh, some that can wear there, and um, yeah, as the end wears, uh, it's still going to work well as a fall. So I divide the fall up into five sections. So we have four sections which are 7.5 inches long and that adds up to our 30 inches and then we need a little bit extra uh, at the top here for the loop which is going to go round the whip itself. Now I like that loop to be just two pieces in there um, and what that means is that it's, it's stronger than just one piece um, but it's not quite as thick uh, and difficult um, to get around the whip uh, as the full on four pieces are. So, we have one piece which is just going to go one segment, but it's also going to have another inch and a half. Remember, we've got uh, three quarters of an inch here, and it's going up to the top and back down again. So that's 7.5 plus 1.5, so that'll be nine inches long. Uh, and this, we're going to make it in a similar way to the way that uh, I made the fall, uh, the core. Uh, and that is using the lacing needle and forcing pieces inside of each other. Um, so, if you remember for that, we need a little bit extra for the working end. And because this is the first one, it's going inside of everything else. We don't need to worry about the expansion of the outside sleeve of it. So it's going to be 7.5 plus 1.5, which is 9 inches. And then I'm just going to add half an inch on the end of that. Uh, so we want our red strand here to be 9.5 inches long. Our green segment here is going to be folded over and what's going to happen is the red one is going to be inside of this and this end here we're going to pull in through this part here until it lines up inside of itself like that so we'll have a loop at the top uh, and there'll be this red piece ending on the inside here uh, and this one is ending on the inside of here so then we'll end up with like a three piece uh, thing going on. Uh, so let's just work that out. So we have 7.5 plus 7.5 equals 15. So that's up that side. And then we're going to have another inch and a half, which is over this bit here. So plus 1.5. And then we're going to have another three sections here. So plus 7.5 plus 7.5 plus 7.5 so that's 39 inches but uh, we do actually want a little bit extra because you, ima you imagine this one this piece here this section here is going to have uh, two pieces inside of it this section here is going to have another piece inside of it and so we are going to get some expansion plus we want another half inch on the end of here and another half inch on the end of here so we're going to be at least 40 inches uh, and then I think 
uh, I'll cut to say 46 inches. Oh. I'll cut to 46 inches. So our green one wants to be 46 inches long. Now that might change once we actually come to to make it and we get a little bit more accurate on how much things are expanding and moving around and that kind of thing. Um, we might actually chop that a little bit shorter. But just to make it safe for ourselves, 46 inches. Now this last seg segment uh, is actually going to be forced over everything. Uh, so it's going to be forced over three pieces here, two pieces here, one piece here, and that's going to give us our outside sleeve. Um, you'll see this as we go along. So, But this one will be 30 inches long and then remember we've got the sideways expansion uh, so this one let's do this at 45 so we we'll do 45 inches long we might find we want to cut a bit off later but these are the distances that we're going to cut uh, and I'll show you how I put it all together uh, ready to put onto our whip I have here the first two pieces that we're going to put inside of each other. So this is the 9 inch piece and this is the green one, which is the 46 inch piece. Now what we want to happen uh, is we want this one here to end up inside of this one, but we want it to finish just here at 8 inches, remember, because we still want a half inch to be able to cut off that end. Um, so. I've measured out 8 inches just there and then I'm going to move my way along up to this way and you can see here this is where I'm going to go in at the side wall so that I can pull my piece inside using our lacing hook and end up with this piece inside of here and then what will happen eventually is with both pieces inside this will this side will all get pulled in where this one ends and we'll end up with uh, three pieces here two pieces here one piece here okay so let's do it so yeah I've got my piece where I want it at eight inches that's where I want it to end and so I'm going to come come into the thing a little bit further than that just about here. Remember this one's going to expand slightly but not that much. So at this point here I'm going to open it up with the FID and then I'm going to slide a needle inside. Now I don't want it to come off the end of the needle. So like I said before when we were making the core, I usually do this on my lap with it pressed up against my knee. For today, I'm going to take a set of hemostats and just clip those on just to make sure that this excess doesn't drop off the end of my needle. So I'm going to work this down until I've got the end of it poking out there. I'm going to take the short piece. This is clear enough. Yeah, I'll be knocking the cam camera every five seconds. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pull that right up to the end. And take a pair of scissors. These are actually new scissors, but they're not very good. Okay. Well, I'll we'll just melt that in. And leave it for a second or two. And then I'm going to pull this outside one over the top. Just like so. 
Now as I'm pulling it through, uh, when I get to here, I'm going to keep track of this end, this end as it's being sucked inside this one. See now we're nearly there, we're at just about seven inches. And I've got about an inch left to go up here. So what I'm gonna do is pull that through, pull it all the way through. too far but that's okay I can adjust that at the other end there's a little bit excess here so I'm going to cut that off close and then I'm going to work the inside back in so there we go we have one piece on the inside here and I can feel that it ends here so I'm going to pull that up to eight inches and then I'll chop off the excess on the same. So next up what we want to happen is at the point where this one ends on the inside here so it's sort of almost halfway along what we want to happen is this bit to go inside of here leaving a loop of about an inch and a half diameter. Now that just happens to be around the size of a Sharpie. So how do we do that? Okay, well this time around I'm going to fold it exactly to help where I want it. So I've got the end here I want this piece going inside and I want it to end right about here. Now bearing in mind this time round it is going to expand some so I'm going to come a few inches further along than that and we'll go in through the side wall. take my lacing needle and I'm going to work it all the way along until I come up to this point here now it will get sort of wrinkled onto this thing so I'm going to take my hemostats again and make sure that it can't come off I'm just going to keep on pushing it down until we get to that point where we can feel the end. I'm just going to work it through. There we go. And get enough through that we can take our end here. Place it through like so, bring it up to the top, we shall snip it off, oh that's a better pair, and then melt it in. So 
so now I'm going to work this over the end here and when I get to close to the end I'm going to slip the sharpie into this loop just to make sure that it doesn't get pulled all the way inside. If it does, it doesn't really matter. You can use your fid and kind of pull it back out again. So let's just start working that over the top like so. See on the other end, I'm actually having to pull that through a little bit now. This should be okay. Let's keep working that down. And just to make sure I don't lose the end. Okay. Now on this end. You can see I've got a bit poking out the end here. I'm going to cut off the end and then keeping this loop here we've actually had to compress all of this in order to get it onto here but there's more uh, sleeve here than we actually need to cover everything so holding onto the end here I'm then just going to work the excess down you can see there it just slides back inside nicely okay sometimes what you can do if this is being a little bit reluctant I mean this is this one's actually gone in quite nicely um, but if this is being a bit reluctant to sit nicely um, what you can do is what you would do on a, a leather fall to encourage it to be round is you can take another piece of cord or in the case of a leather whip um, a piece of leather and you go once around it like so and then you can tension in between two points so normally I would use this in between my feet and my other hand at the moment I'm probably gonna have to use my teeth <laughs> uh, no, I'm not gonna use my teeth I like them I don't want them to come out uh, <laughs> but then once you've got this under tension you can use this and you sort of pull it up and down in that kind of motion more pulling there and these two being pulled apart and what that will do is is this will constrict around the fall in a round fashion and just encourage everything to lie nicely just like so clear as mud all right well this one appears to be lying reasonably nicely so I'm going to attempt now to put the outside piece on before I do it though I just want to make sure that this end piece is about the length that I want it so I want this to drop off at 7.5 and I want about half an inch to play with so that's where our last strand ends I'm going to cut this off at 8 inches okay we have our fall now ready to go into the outside piece. I've attached my lacing needle like so and we've got the other end on the sharpie just here. So I have the outside skin and I've prepared this in exactly the same way as we did for the core so I've tapped it down until it's sort of a funnel shape and then taken the lighter and just singed the ends together a little bit like that. Um, now on the needle you may notice I've now taped up these end pieces that's just to make it easier for it to pass through the center of this without catching any strands um, especially when this when you're putting something on the outside uh, you don't want anything to catch so I'm just going to start feeding the outside skin on like 
this. And I want it to compress, so I'm going to feed lots and lots on. When it starts to compress, we can then work it over the end like that. Remember, there's only one piece at the end of here, so this first bit's quite easy. We want to be able to grab onto the needle because what we want to be able to do is to pull this inner strand nice and straight when it starts to go over the thickest piece here. So I'm going to keep feeding stuff through. sure how much of this I can show in this shot so I might actually have to move around because fairly often you do have to use a bit of unreasonable force to get this into place. Okay so right now I've, I'm able to grab onto the end of the needle and pull onto there and I've also got my sharpie on the end here. Now normally what I do is put this in between my feet and pull at the same time, pulling this outer sleeve over the top. So I'm going to reset the camera and I'll give you a shot of how I'm working it through. So I've got this sharpie on the floor, I've got the lacing needle in my hand and I'm pulling up sharply on the lacing needle so that everything is nice and tight, it's as small as it can be when I'm trying to get this outside sleeve on. And what I'm going to do now is just keep on working it through. So you can see that's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but what it does is it gives us a few advantages. A, we've got a nice drop off inside of the outside skin. Um, this will look a bit nicer in a moment once I've tidied everything up and sorted the tension out. Um, but the other thing it does is it allows us to get our um, it allows us to get our hitch knot nice and tight. One of the advantages you have on a leather whip 
is that you're able to put the small end of the fall in place, tie the knot on there, and then as you pull the rest of the fall through, everything tightens up. Um, and we can achieve that with this one, but there's a couple of things we need to do before this is ready to go. So you can see here we've got some scraggly ends just on the outside. And also, we still have a lacing needle attached at the bottom here. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit more through until I've got the end inside there. And I'm going to clip that off. And I'm going to pull the excess through like that. Now at this end, what I'm going to do is take my scissors. You have to be very careful not to singe the inside strands on this. We just literally want to stop this end piece from fraying. It will be held underneath the hitch knot, so it's not too much of a problem. And you saw how difficult it was to get it on. It's not coming off again. It's a bit like a Chinese finger trap in that regard. The harder you pull on this end, the tighter it cinches down. So I'm just very carefully melting those strands and I do it in sort of four sections. So I'm gonna melt that section, link my finger, stick it down. I'm gonna go over to the other side. And take my scissors. Clip off the excess, just leaving the tiniest little bits of fluff there. And then we're going to melt them down. And stick it. And then this side. Same again. Melt it down. And stick it. And last but not least, this side. And stick it. Now occasionally you'll end up with like a little tiny spiky bit poking out. So if you do, if that happens, you put that to the uppermost. And if it's sticking out, just melt it back in. And there we have our fall. Um, it's not quite finished yet in that you'll notice that the end here is much longer than we need it to be. So what I'll do is I'll measure this off uh, and I'll probably measure the whole fall out to about 32, 33 inches, cut off there and then melt that end. So that's the fall made uh, and I'll take you over now and I'll show you how I put it onto the whip. I'm here at the end and I'm ready to attach the fall onto the end of the whip. This is platted out now to uh, 85 inches. We want our whip to be 84 inches and we've got a, an inch up that end to, to cut off. All I've done is unclipped uh, and threaded my fall onto the inner strand here. And all I'm going to do is push that over the end here. Uh, easiest way I've found to do this is to sort of take two of the strands. Uh, let's take these two because that one's kind of locking that one in place. Let's take two of the strands and just feed them individually through like so. There's one. This bit. Okay, so I've got those two coming through and I'm just going to push it on and then I can pull these two through as well. 
Now, like I said before, we're actually we're not going to tie on right here at this point. We're actually going to tie on. I like to tie on around the third sort of point around here because we want the knot to tighten up, but we don't want to make it too difficult for ourselves. And we're going to tie it tight anyway. So just before we get started, the 84 mark is around here. So I've actually plaited past it a little bit. And what I'm going to do before we do anything else is just make sure that everything is as tight as I can make it. And we will get more opportunities to tighten everything up afterwards. Uh, but if we can start with it nice and tight, that's even better. So, with the end piece sort of further up the whip there, and the bit I'm going to tie onto here, I'm holding the fall against the bottom of the whip here. So I'm going to take this first top strand, this is the highest strand and I've got that on my right hand side. And I'm going to take that over the top of the whip, like so. There's lots of videos showing how to do this as well, so don't just take my word for it. Watch a few. And then I'm going to pass this one, he says dropping it. I'm going to pass this one through here, like so. Now at the moment I don't want to pull too hard on it because I want to set it in place. I want it actually a little bit higher where I want it than where I want it to finish up at. So you see like that. I'm going to brace the whip. I'm going to pull that nice and tight but I'm not pulling down the way. I'm pulling up the way. And then the other reason why I like doing the core like this is because I can now take this end piece and I can tie these up off just loosely in order and I now know which strand is which it also holds it kind of out of my way so the next strand is going to be this bottom one on the left and I want the knot to sit nice and neatly next to this one so I'm actually going to take it underneath the strand we've just tied like so and then I'm going to take it over the top around everything and I'm going to come in just here. And what I'm looking for is I don't want it to be twisted. I just want everything to sit nicely next to each other. And these knots should come in nicely, just sort of one after another. A little bit of twist there, so I'll just take that out and push that in, and then I'm going to pull that nice and tight. And I'm going to take this one and just loosely tie it off to my core strand yeah, past the first one. So now I know that this is my first strand, this is my second strand, so I know that when I've before I chop everything off, if I've got one of the strands that isn't sitting quite tightly enough, I can pull on there. Okay, so our next one is going to be the next one on the left, and I'm going to bring that underneath all of the strands, not the core, not the uh, fall, but underneath the two strands we've tied. Uh, and the one on the right. So that's going to come underneath everything so that that's where the knot will be. I'm going to take it over the top. And through itself. Just settle it in nicely where I want it. Give it a good tug like so. And then I'm going to tie that off around the core strand just loosely and in order. So then last but not least, we have the strand from this side, and that's just sitting where we want it now. So 
So this one's going to come over the top of everything through itself. Now this one, if you imagine if this is just sort of hanging loose like this and this is only a, a half hitch on here, it'd be quite easy for this one to come undone. So I'm going to pull it really tight and when we start pulling our fall through, this one is actually going to sit through the fall loop and be held by that there. Before I do that though, you can see here this one isn't quite as tight as I would like it and I know that that's strand number one. So strand number one, I'm going to pull on that and get that a little bit tighter. See now strand number two isn't quite as tight, so strand number two, get that nice and tight. Strand number three, get that nice and tight. And then strand number four. And just to be on the safe side, we'll go through those in order once more. So, the remainder of this last one here, I'm going to take up and I'm going to loop it through my fall, just like that. so that when everything gets pulled tight that strand is being held by the fall loop and I'm going to take my fall I'm going to pull that through yeah sorry camera died <laughs> so yeah as I pull on fall here you can see that these knots here are going to get nice and tight uh, I'm just going to hold this one now up in line and I'm going to continue pulling on here until that nestles up nicely next to the knots just there give it another little tug on there and then just before I chop these off I'm just going to make sure everything's good and tight pull each one in turn and this is the point to check just here see if there's any squishiness at all if that's not rock hard just there it will fall apart so if that's not nice and tight now is the time to take it all apart and redo it because uh, you'll save yourself a lot of hassle in the future okay so last few bits and pieces we're just going to clip off these uh, we're going to clip off the core as well uh, and melt them in now i like to leave a little bit on the end here uh, i don't like to have it right in there and melt it up so each one in turn it doesn't really matter what order you do them in to be honest uh, i'm just going to cut that off Let's melt the end, lick my fingers, and just gently squeeze them together. You don't want to make like a sort of spade shape, but you do want the ends nice and sealed. So I'm just going to melt that once more, just to be sure. Make very sure that you don't cut your fall when you're doing this. It's quite unlikely because it's quite thick and you'd, you'd notice. Uh, but if you're putting a thinner fall on, it might be possible. So when I'm melting these, I'm just holding them up away from the rest of the whip, just so I'm not melting anything important. Okay. 
give it a second or two just to cool down. And we'll do the next one. Then last but not least, let me snip off the core. Now as soon as I do this, this piece at the end of the whip is going to want to go that way quite quickly. So I'll hold on here. And that one gets melted as well. Okay, so that's our whip nearly finished. Uh, we've still got the handle knot to put on. Uh, it still needs a really good roll. Uh, I still need to bind the other end, chop off the knots uh, and cut it. Uh, but I'm gonna leave this video uh, there for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please leave me a like. If you don't like it, uh, don't. See you next time.